Hello students, welcome to ECLIMU Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, when we were discussing introduction to force, we discussed different categories of forces and one of it was gravitational and the other one was centripetal force. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss gravitational and centripetal force. My name is Albert. I hope you are going to enjoy this lesson. So by the end of this lesson, I will expect you to be able to describe fully gravitational force and then also describe fully centripetal uh, force. So in this case, I will first want you to know the definition, how to define what is gravitational force, definition, and then you will give me factors affecting these forces and then finally you will give me examples of cases where these forces are experienced so for the two types of forces gravitational force and centripetal uh, force so what is gravitational force gravitational force is a force of attraction attraction between two bodies which are at a distance that is very important to note so gravitational force is a force of attraction and this force of attraction is between two bodies and these two bodies must be at a distance it means the body should not touch each other we're going to discuss that later a good example of attraction between two bodies without contact is a force between planet earth and the satellite which is the moon or sometimes we have the sun and the planets so the force of attraction between the sun and the planets or planet earth and the moon which is a satellite is a gravitational uh, force gravitational force is a non-contact force non-contact force non-contact force means the attraction takes place without touching each other without the two bodies touching each other so these are forces which act even if the objects are not in contact with each other so these non-contact forces we are going to see some other examples of non-contact forces but generally non-contact forces they take place without the two bodies touching each other like you can see on the screen we have two bodies object one then we have object two these two objects are at a distance from each other and that distance we have represented here by d and then these two bodies have specific masses the first one has mass one then the second one has a mass m2 so and then there's a force which is uh, attracting them the force of attraction between them and we are going to realize the force of attraction between these two bodies will depend on two things it will depend on the mass mass of these objects and also depend on the distance between the two objects so stay tuned as we uh, learn more so we have gravitational force of the earth and the gravitational force of the earth is the force of attraction on bodies towards the center of the earth this is a force which make bodies if this is the ground and then you throw a body upwards the force which make the, make this body to want to return back to the ground or that pulls it towards the ground is what we call the gravitation force of the earth now look at this when we have a gravitation force of the earth it means we have two bodies we have planet earth and then we have the body that you are throwing upwards so there is a force of attraction between these two bodies the body is attracting the earth and the earth is also attracting the body now what you are going to realize the body with big mass big mass will win it will attract the body with a smaller mass that's why when you throw a stone upward the stone is smaller than planet earth so the earth will pull it towards the ground so in that case you have uh that's what we call the gravitational force of the earth 
the two bodies, the body you are throwing upwards and the body which is the planet Earth will attract each other. And then the one with big mass will make the one with a smaller mass to fall on it. Like you can see on the screen we have uh, a baseball or a tennis ball falling to the ground. In this case, it's because of gravitational uh, force of the Earth. We have two main factors which affect the gravitational force. And the first one, just like I mentioned, is the mass of the object. The two bodies which are involved, their masses determine the amount of gravitational force which they will experience. And we are saying the larger the mass of the object, the stronger the gravitational force. So if the mass is large, then it means gravitational force will also be stronger or large. Like you can see in the second diagram, the masses are very big, and then the force is strong in such a way that the bodies are even closer to each other and the arrows are touching each other. Then in the first diagram, the bodies are relatively small, then the force between them is weak in such a way that there's even a gap here where the force is not felt at all. And then in the third diagram, we have very small bodies, and then it means the force between them is very weak up to a point there is a very large gap because now the force of attraction is very weak. The bodies will remain very far away from each other. So in that case, uh, the gravitational force will be very weak because of the mass of the bodies. And then we have this distance of separation between the two bodies. When the distance of separation is too long, like in this case, the distance of separation is too long, it means also the forces are very weak. Now, if the distance is too small, like in this case, the, the force uh, between them is very strong. In that case, gravitational force is strong. When you advance your studies, you will be told that the gravitational force is calculated as a gravitational constant times mass 1 times mass 2 over the distance between them uh, squared. This one you will learn it uh, later. So in this case, it means as you increase the mass, the force also increases. But as you increase the distance between them, the force uh, decreases because it's this, this is inverse proportion. The second force that we are going to discuss in this lesson is centripetal force. A centripetal force, we are going to define it as a force which maintains a body to move in a circular orbit or in a circular path. It is directed towards the center of the orbit or the center of the tract. Like in this case, if you have a stone and then you tie it on a rope or on a thread and then you wear it, it will rotate in such a way that it forms a continuous circular path. The force which makes it to maintain that uh, position or that circular path is called centripetal force. And that force acts towards the center of that circle which is formed. So some of the examples of situations in which centripetal force act, one is wearing a stone tied on a string so when you wear a stone tied on a string it will make a continuous circular path and the force which maintains it or which uh, maintains it on that circular path is called centripetal uh, force another case where centripetal force takes place is uh, earth revolving around the sun along its own orbit Remember, from your geography, you are told we have very many planets and all these planets are revolving around the sun. Now, when these Earth are revolving around the sun, they are kept at a certain position which you call an orbit. Now, for them to maintain in that orbit, then there is a force which is tying them or the force which is holding holding them in that position so that they cannot move away from that orbit. And that force is called centripetal uh, force. As you can see on the screen, the earth is moving in this direction and then the 
there's a force which is maintaining the earth on that fixed path and that force is called centripetal uh, force another case where centripetal force takes place is a car moving around a circular track or a road or a corner and as you can see on the screen we have a car moving around around about and there is a force which is trying to pull it towards the center of the traffic island in this uh, uh, road so we are going to realize that for this person to maintain the position on that road then he must reduce he or she must reduce the speed so that the centripetal force is also reduced then the car will maintain its position on the road so we have discussed two main forces that is gravitational force and centripetal force and we have seen examples of cases where both a uh, gravitational force and the centripetal force acts that marks the end of our lesson today when we meet next time we will discuss magnetic force and action and reaction force and we will see why we walk and why we write